Hey guys, it's Maxlaw, and have I got the pick for you. If you're a mechanical legend and enjoy the thrill of a high-risk, high-reward playstyle, then Nidalee is the perfect champion for you. Nidalee is a champion that you have to snowball on, and you can do this by either out-farming the enemy jungler, resulting in getting a huge experience lead advantage, or by ganking lanes of setup since your champion provides tons of damage. Nidalee's passive has two parts. While Nidalee is in a bush, she gets 10% additional movement speed and that is tripled while facing an enemy champion. The second part is Hunt, which triggers once Nidalee hits an enemy with Nidalee's Spear and Trap, which reveals the enemy for 4 seconds and grants a 10% additional movement speed for the same duration, which is tripled when facing the enemy. The movement speed can stack but can't go above 30%. Nidalee has two forms, so let's begin with the human form. In her human form, she has ranged auto attacks. Her Q in human form is Javelin Toss. Nidalee tosses a spear in a target direction, damaging the first enemy hit and makes the champion or large monster hit by this hunted. This deals more damage the longer the spear travels. Nidalee's W is Bushwhack. You can place down a trap in an area which lasts for 2 minutes long and grants vision in the area. When an enemy steps on it, it will deal magic damage over 4 seconds. Nidalee's E is Primal Surge. Nidalee heals herself or an ally which is increased by the missing health of the target and it will grant the target attack speed. Another thing to note is that when you damage an enemy with your W or Q, it will reduce your ultimate cooldown to 0. In Cougar form, she has melee auto attacks. Her Q in Cougar form is takedown. Nidalee's next auto attack is empowered, gaining 75 bonus range, dealing magic damage with an increased amount based on the target's missing health. The damage of this ability is increased by 40% if the target is hunted. The thing to note about this ability is that it resets your auto attack timer and it becomes an unstoppable auto attack. Your W is Pounce. Nidalee dashes in the target direction, dealing magic damage where she lands. When an enemy is hunted, your range on your Pounce is increased. When you kill an enemy in cougar form or pounce on a hunted enemy, the cooldown of the ability will be reduced. Nidalee's E is swipe. Nidalee claws in an arc dealing magic damage to everyone in the way. For runes on Nidalee, you usually want to take Electrocute. It's great for the additional burst it provides and with your combo it's very easy to prop. After that you want to take Sudden Impact. You'll be able to get the bonus penetration so easily with how often you can dash with your Cougar W. The next row is up to personal preference but I prefer to take Zombie Wards because of the extra vision it gives. Otherwise take Eyeball Collection if you're feeling frisky and ready to kill a lot of laners. Finally I'll take Ravenous Hunter because of the insane healing it gives to Nidalee. For your secondary tree, you want to take Water Walking and Nimbus Cloak. These runes are insanely good on junglers right now and you must abuse them when you can every game. For your build on Nidalee, most of the time you want to start with Hunter's Talisman. It is a must-have when clearing the Raptors and Krugs, since it provides a lot of sustain. However, if you want to hit level 2 or 3 super fast and gank or counter jungle instantly, you can take Hunter's Machete to clear your single target camps. This way of playing is a lot more high risk since if you don't get your blue buff or you don't get something level 2 or 3, you'll probably fall behind or have a hard time clearing your jungle. After that, you go Red Smite with Runic Echoes. If Nidalee cannot duel the enemy jungler early, she loses a lot of value. So if the enemy jungler takes Red Smite, and you don't, you'll be sad. You can have different boots depending on the situation, but you should choose between boots of Lucidity, Mercury Treads, Ninja Tabai, or Sorcerer Shoes. After that, you have many choices. The main items are Athens, Rod of Ages, Hourglass, or Lich Bane. These are situational choices. Athens is great against magic damage junglers and it's super cheap. Roa is better for general survivability and it's super efficient when it stacks. Hourglass is great against a lot of AD damage and if you want to jump into a team fight and buy time. But for overall damage, Lich Bane is fantastic since it's in a really well with Nidalee's kit. You can choose a few of these and move on to items such as Void Staff, Rabadans, Banshee's Veil vale, and Leandries. Don't forget to buy your pink wards though! For your skill order you should always max Q first, it deals the most damage and there isn't a healthy alternative. Finally go for E second and your W last, taking a point in your ultimate whenever available. For summoners take Smite and Flash. And if you're enjoying the video, please leave a like, subscribe and comment down below how much you love Nidalee. For your early game on Nidalee, as I said in the intro, you really want to snowball. People fall into the trap of power farming on Nidalee, which is good in some situations since she farms really fast and can outpace the enemy jungler. However, if you do this, I strongly suggest that you also counter jungle a lot and provide your team with information of the enemy jungler by warding or placing traps in the enemy jungle. Otherwise, I would look to gank the lanes of CC or as per usual, if an enemy laner is inting, you take him, her or they out. When clearing camps on Nidalee, try to focus the large monster as you have a lot of AoE abilities to damage 
smaller monsters. Also, when taking raptors, if you're having issues of health sustain, you can kite them around so that you don't take as much damage and you regenerate health. When ganking a lane, you should go to either match where the enemy jungler is and counter gank, or go to the lane of the most setup. Nidalee has no inherent CC, so ganking a lane that can provide that setup will allow you to land your spear more easily. Similarly, following where the enemy jungler is can provide you with a winning 2v2 most of the time because of either a level lead you have generated from farming camps, or because you can spear from fog and one shot a target with your laner. Nidalee isn't great once the game goes into the later stages. However, if you've played Nidalee correctly, you should have snowballed and given yourself a strong lead. Nidalee's best assets in the later game is providing either a lot of poke and heal before the teamfight actually breaks out. You can either play backline of Nidalee or go in for the kills depending on the situation. If you have to go in for the kill in teamfights, I strongly recommend building Hourglass and possibly Lichplane if you have enough gold. When controlling objectives later into the game, you should win every smite fight. You can combo your smite with your Q to guarantee nobody else can outsmite you. Over Overall, Nidalee is a strong champion in solo queue as she's very good at snowballing and can 1v9 a lot of games if you're really insane. She's extremely difficult to play, but if you master her, it's worth it, and you'll end up either controlling the enemy jungler or snowballing your lanes. Thanks for watching the guide. If you want more guides like this one, subscribe to the Monster Rugby Gaming YouTube channel. If it's more of me you want, you can follow me at MaxLaw on Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. You can also see us play in the NLC every Tuesday and Wednesday starting at 6pm GMT.